Welcome to Tuesday again. I hope you're all having a wonderful week. Um, it is once again Tap Tuesday, and that means that it's Talk and Tap with Kitty. If you haven't tuned in before, um, then I'm Kitty. I'm from the London Satin Dolls, and uh, it's a pleasure to have you with me here this evening. Um, how this live stream normally works is I take all kinds of music requests so if you have a song that you really love and you want to hear me improvise some tap to then let me know in the comments and um, let me know what you like listening to good afternoon Eric's joined already on Instagram which is great and we've got Martin already commenting on Facebook good evening hope you're well too if you are tuning in do let me know where you're tuning in from um, as I've mentioned, I'm here in London at the moment, um, so it's just gone 8 o'clock um, and it's still really nice and light and sunny outside at the moment. Um, let me know if you had any interesting plans for last weekend, because I think it was the summer solstice on Friday, I think. So that means that, you know, we're kind of in the part of the year where the days are longest and the nights shortest. Um, so we've been having some lovely sunshiny evenings. Um, and here in London, today it's been 27 degrees Celsius, which um, I'm not entirely sure how to convert into Fahrenheit for you guys in the US, um, but it's been pretty warm uh, for, for where we are. We're not usually used to having um, anything more really, to be honest, than like 25 degrees. So um, yeah, and it's supposed to be, I think, 31 possibly tomorrow. So um, it's going to be a scorcher, which would be nice. Um, so it'd be good to get, get out and enjoy that in the park, would be great. <laughs> so we've got some lovely comments already. Let's have a little look at Facebook first. Oh, how am I doing? Hi Michael, hope you're doing well too. I'm doing very well, thank you. Ah, Carlos is in again and he says, I'm tuning in from the same city, Anaheim in California. That's awesome. I'm sure you'll have heard. We've got lots, lots and lots of uh, Californian dolls. Um, oh, we've got um, someone tuning in from Germany. Hi there, Christian. And Martin says, what is it like when you perform in the heat? Well, sometimes it's... Um, it's pretty grueling, <laughs> I have to say, although I think that's probably because we're not quite as used to it um, as our Californian counterparts. Um, yeah, here in the UK, last year we had a wonderful gig at the War and Peace Festival um, in England, which is a really, really big festival. And uh, we were performing there on the hottest day of the year um, and actually one of the hottest days in the last, I don't know, at least few decades, I think and um, it got up to 39 degrees Celsius, which is just like unheard of um, in the UK, this part of the world, it's just crazy. So that was particularly tough. We did a lot of, um, you know, putting our feet in paddling pools and, um, <laughs> and uh, you know, standing next to big electric fans and things, which are always very helpful. Um, I love a stage that has some good, good fans. Um, so yeah, both, you know, people fans and electric fans for keeping a nice cool. Um, let's see what people are saying on Instagram. Hello everyone who's tuning in. Erica's tuning in from Pittsburgh. That's awesome. Um, and we've got some questions about what's my favourite song to dance to, which is just, it's just too tough, I'm sorry. <laughs> I get asked this question quite a lot and it's just impossible. Um, I have way too big of a range of music taste, I think, to answer that. Um, yeah, so hello everyone who's tuning in. It's lovely to have you. We've got someone tuning in from Belgium. Um, so I think we should probably kick off with some tap dancing. Um, I've got a few tunes myself that I would like to dance to. But as I say, if you've got any um, tunes in mind that you'd like to hear me tap along to, um, then please let me know in the comments. Um, if I can find it on Spotify, then I will dance to it. So there you go. If there's something you've had stuck in your head or something you just really like and think, oh, that'd be interesting to hear some tap dancing to, then let me know. So I'm gonna kick it off, I think, with a classic. Um, and this is a jazz standard, as you might say. Um, it is by the late and great Duke Ellington, and it is Caravan.
Vintage, hello, it's lovely to have you. Oh, first request of the day comes from Michael. Thank you very much. And it is a Beyonce shoe um, and it's Halo. But Michael's requesting the post modern jukebox version. Let me know if any of you guys are also post modern jukebox fans. I'm a huge fan personally. And um, they do a really cool thing where they take mostly modern songs, I think, or contemporary songs, um, and they transform them into different um, styles depending on time periods. So it might be like, I don't know, what's a really good example of this, like a 1920s version of Call Me Maybe, or um, they do loads of their 60s versions of songs I really, really like. Um, yeah. Oh, thank you very much for all of your lovely comments. So I think let's get that up next. Let's see if we can find that. Halo, the PMJ version. Yes. All right, let's go for that, I think. Through the doors by the field, maybe there's a moment. I'm 
was so much fun. That was great. Hopefully, um, if any of you guys haven't heard of Postman Jukebox, then you'll have got a little bit of a taste of it um, from that. Oh, yeah. As I say, it's quite a warm day over here in London today. <laughs> so make sure you stay hydrated. It's very important. How are we doing on Instagram? Oh, I've got some lovely comments. Thank you for joining. Woo. And Fab on Facebook as well. Thank you so much. Woo. Oh dear. So we actually had some questions come in over the weekend um, through our main Saturn Dolls account on Instagram. So if you're on Facebook right now and you haven't already, do go and check out the Saturn Dolls Instagram page. From there you can find tons and tons of different dolls <laughs> all over the world to follow. Um, and you can also find out about what's going on in our schedule in the coming week, what um, live streams we've got coming up. We always have loads and loads of cool stuff going on. Also, I need to make a big shout out to my girl Roslyn, who recently has started being able to live stream, uh, which is amazing. She's incredible. She's one of our um, vocal captains in LA. Um, so I definitely, definitely recommend you check her out. She's live streaming this week, I believe possibly on Friday. But I might double check that for you guys. If you follow us on Instagram or uh, like our page on Facebook, then you can stay tuned with all of the information. Um, so yeah, yes, Friday from Roslyn, it has been confirmed. <laughs> so make sure, make sure you tune into that. Um, thank you so much for all of your comments. Oh, lots of people who love Postman Jukebox, us too, really big fans. Um, so, as I say, we had some questions come into our Instagram over the weekend because we've been posting on the Saturn Doors main account and I've been posting as well on my um, individual Saturn Doll Kitty account um, about some different tap dancers um, from times gone by, tap legends as it were. And um, so last week we were posting about um, Bill Bojangles Robinson, who I'm sure you'll, you'll have all heard of, he's a very, very famous guy. Um, and this week we were posting about uh, John Bubbles. And someone asked, just checking the comments, it wasn't someone in the comments right now. Someone was asking about these guys and you know, what is it that um, kind of is about them that really um, kind of inspired people further on? Like, did they have specific styles? Um, and can we sort of trace the steps that we do now back to them? And the answer is absolutely yes. Um, Tap dance is definitely one of those dance styles, and to be honest, I feel like a vast majority of dance styles are derived from vernacular dance styles, which means coming out of culture, basically. Um, and in terms of why Bill Robinson and John Bubbles, for example, are really interesting is because they were kind of close together in timeline. Um, John Bubbles, had a really interesting style that kind of changed the course a little bit of tap dance because prior to him Bill Robinson had been very kind of like up on his toes so whenever you see <clears throat> clips of Bill Robinson he'll be kind of doing um he did a lot of kind of time step kind of work on his toes it's very kind of up <laughs> to kind of put these like toe accents in so he'd use the toes as his kind of accent points um so and yeah he was pretty much basically the father of rhythm tap um <clears throat> so anytime you see anyone really like syncopating rhythms from their toes you know you could say that John Bobbles might have been an inspiration for that um so yeah essentially yes it's hard to kind of exactly say with these kinds of things like this step particularly is this person's step because at the end of the day like tap dance especially is all about taking inspiration from other artists and turning it into something of your own or you know modifying it and evolving it so yeah but it all kind of comes from these tap grades so if you want to hear more um about those definitely do go follow us on instagram 
and uh, keep sending your questions in because I find it very interesting um, to hear them. So there we go. Oh, Michael says a uh, question here. How did you and the London Dolls enjoy your first 1940s ball last weekend? Um, it was fantastic. Um, if you guys again haven't heard of the 1940s ball before, it usually happens every summer and every Christmas too. And we had um, the opportunity to uh, do a virtual um, kind of live stream performance for them last weekend. What day are we on now? Tuesday. Yeah, so it was on Saturday. It was like a long time since then now. Um, but yeah, so if you haven't checked out the 1940s ball before, especially um, on Facebook, you can go back and watch our live stream there. It was a lot of fun. It was really nice to get the chance to perform with the US Dolls on there as well. Um, and they're just a wonderful organisation, really lovely people, so definitely go and check that. Um, ah, yes, so Martin says, I saw the video posted by the Saturn Dolls of Bubbles and saw some moves that looked part of the satin dolls. Exactly, you know, it's all um, it's all kind of moves that, you know, started off a really long time ago and gradually over time they kind of get modified and changed a little bit, but ultimately like the steps and the roots are all the same. So yeah, the more kind of tap dance you watch, um, the more you can kind of, I'm just gonna turn down my background music a little bit. Um, yeah, the more you can recognize these kind of steps, and particularly the more you kind of watch videos and um, you know old archive of these tap legends, you can basically start to spot um, you know in people's dancing now oh, that's like inspiration from that dance or oh, that really looks like that um, kind of style. So it's interesting. Yeah. All right. So I think with without further ado, I might just do some more tap dancing. Um, so I think. I might take it to something a little bit more modern, something I could do a bit of syncopation with my toes too. Um, let's have a little look. All right, this is a song that has actually been in the charts recently, I think. Um, I think it might have even become popular through uh, the social media platform called TikTok. Uh, I am on TikTok, Assassin Doll Kitty. However, unfortunately, I haven't actually posted anything yet. So if you've got any ideas for things that I could post, do let me know. I've got a few little ideas, but I've just not got around to actually executing them yet. So, yeah. Look out, basically, for Kitty on TikTok very soon. In the meantime, here's a song that I think got a little bit popular through it. So, we'll see. Babe, I can't wait to know Believe me, I'll always be there so.
I think. For you guys, let me know if you have any more requests. We'd love to hear them. Oh, hello. Hello, Taryn. Lovely to have you in. <laughs> Hope you're doing very well. Miss you very much. Ah, Martin was saying that our lovely Satnil Vera was talking about a similar thing a few weeks ago about the history of tap, which is great. Um, if you haven't checked out Satnil Vera before, um, she's on Instagram as well. Go and give her a follow. <laughs> um, she's so wonderful, really, really super talented LA tap dancer. Um, so you should definitely go and give her a follow. Oh, we've got a very good request as well, coming in on Facebook. Um, Michael's requesting Sir Duke by Stevie Wonder, which is a great tune. I actually um, used to warm up to Sir Duke um, when I was part of a tap company as a teenager. We'd warm up to it every single week. Um, so that was always really, really fun. It's just such a funky, it's just such a tune. Great tune. Um, Oh, <laughs> Taryn, is it 5.30 in the morning or 5.30 in the evening? I'm guessing it's 5.30 in the morning for you right now. I'm not entirely sure. My time zones aren't very good, but I'm guessing it might be 5.30 in the morning. So mad respect to you for watching some tap at 5.30 in the morning. <laughs> it's quite a lot, I have to say. But yeah, it's lovely to have you. Thank you for joining morning it is 5 30 in the morning guys i can confirm taryn says it's in the morning honestly thank you <laughs> watching tap at that time is is commitment so thank you very much for that all right i think let's crack on with uh sir duke we'll be nearly halfway through love this song
you too. Oh. All right, how are we doing? <laughs> Someone on a uh, commenting from YouTube says, my goodness, the neighbors won't be happy. Thankfully, I have very um, tolerant housemates. <laughs> how are we doing? <laughs> oh, thank you very much for your comments. Much appreciated. I'll give you a little applause as well. Very kind. Oof. Oh dear. I don't know about you guys, but whew, we're only halfway through. We've already done a lot. <laughs> we're just getting through it today. So, someone on Facebook earlier mentioned that they um, saw on my Instagram um, some posts about a very famous tap dancer. Should be more famous, to be honest, but in the tap dance world, she is very famous. Um, the Dr. Jenny Lagon. And what you should do is go to my Instagram, obviously, check all of these posts out, um, but um, you should look up some of her other videos as well. Um, sadly, there's not a ton of video footage of her dancing that I've been able to find. Um, but having said that, I've not done, you know, I've not done that. I'm not gonna sit here and say I've done the most extensive research ever. So you should definitely go and check her out. Um, uh, yeah, what I'm trying to do basically on my Instagram is at least on a Tuesday for our Tap Tuesday is to highlight um, female tap dancers and also especially female tap dancers and people of colour um, on my Instagram page so that, um, you know, basically they just, there are so many amazing stories um, about these artists and all of the work and contributions that they made to this art and I think it'd be really cool to spend some time uh, for myself um, educating myself better um, and hearing about their stories listening to their stories um, and obviously if I'm gonna do that then I'm gonna share it with you guys as well um, so you can hear more about it um, so yeah so that's something you're gonna be doing let me know if there are any tap dancers you'd like to hear more about in particular I can do a little bit of research on them that'd be really fun um, so yeah, and any musicians as well, because we're all about that too. <laughs> oh, Martin says he's been sat on the beach today, which is lovely. That sounds great. <laughs> oh, Christian is um, asking, do I have a particular warm-up routine? Um, not really, to be honest. There's definitely um, some moves that generally are really good to warm up with. Um, there's definitely like particular moves that I wouldn't do a show without having warmed up first. Um, but yeah, I think there's like a few go-to exercises that I have, but I wouldn't really say there's like a particular set of warm up that I do every single time. Kind of depends to be honest, depends how much time you have as well before a show. Um, so yeah, oh, thank you for your lovely comments. Um, so yeah, so it kind of depends to be honest um, what you want to warm up, but generally there's like a few different particular moves that you definitely want to kind of do, warming your ankles up, warming your knees up, your hips, um, and if you're doing your show as well to be honest, like I'm really bad for not having warmed up before <laughs> doing this improv, but I normally kind of warm up the whole body because at some stage you're going to be you're going to use your arms a lot um, in tap dance anyway. You're going to be using kind of every part of your body um, for dance, so it's good to warm everything up. So yeah, all right. So next up, let's have a little look. Let me know if you've got any more music requests. The ones we've had so far have been great. So uh, let me know if there's any of the songs that you fancy hearing. For now, I think I'm going to go back to my little playlist and see what I fancy dancing to. <laughs> so. I think let's take it down again a little bit and um, I think I fancy doing I've Got the World on a String um, and this is the Billy Taylor Trio version for you.
Jackson on the vibraphone, George Benny, Jess you know Casey, Artie Bernstein on bass, and Nick Fatou on the drum. I got rhythm. <laughs> And um, 
You can wear shoes. A lot of people didn't wear shoes. It's basically a way to kind of tap dance without shoes. So the movement of your feet impacting the sand um, and the sand rubbing against the floor um, makes some really interesting sounds. And it kind of harks back to um, the kind of roots of tap dance where people obviously didn't, you know, we haven't had tap shoes forever. Um, you know, people would dance on their feet. So kind of harks back to that. Um, and there's tons of videos, I'm sure, of people doing um, sandbox dances. So definitely um, have a Google of those on. Have a Google of those on YouTube. Have a look at those on YouTube. <laughs> they're really interesting. Um, they're really cool. So kind of, kind of. Um, so we've got a request for In The Mood. That is a classic as well. And then Christian is asking, are there certain things a song needs to have to be tappable? Like a certain area, sorry, certain era. Yeah. Um, like a certain era, or could it be stuff like say an 80s power ballad? To be honest, I think you can tap dance to pretty much anything. Um, that's at least what I'm trying to do anyway. Um, that's kind of the whole idea behind this requests kind of slots that I do. Um, it's being totally selfish, it's all for me to be honest. <laughs> I'm kidding. Obviously it, it might be nice for you to hear a song that you really like and hear some tap dancing over it, but to be honest, it kind of, this whole idea was born out of me wanting to develop my improvisation skills. So whatever you want to request, I will try and dance to it. It doesn't always sound great. <laughs> It depends, um, but it's always kind of like a little bit of an experiment and experience. Um, so yeah, so always request whatever you want and I'll do my very best. Um, sometimes it's strange as well, like sometimes some songs that you wouldn't necessarily think would be good to tap to, then something strange comes out and it actually turns out really nice. Um, if I was looking to choreograph to something, then I would probably look for again it kind of depends what you want out of it um some of my favorite tracks that i've choreographed to have been really percussive and i've kind of worked with that percussion to either like mirror the percussion with my taps so for instance um there's this song by chano called rockin bongos which um the satin dolls have a tap number two which i choreographed and in that number, it's all about basically these drums and the drums creating the sound and then the tap dancers responding um, and kind of mirroring it. So every beat in that song, pretty much, pretty much, <laughs> every beat in that song I've listened to and then replicated with steps. So either I could go for something that's really, really percussive or I would go for something that has no percussion at all like it might be a song that's literally really simple, it might have like a melody um, with bass or it might be a like I've choreographed to an acoustic guitar piece before where it's literally just like classical guitar um, and then you've got a lot of kind of scope to create the percussion around that. So it all kind of depends really um, on what you want for the end result. <laughs> But you're more than welcome to request absolutely anything um, music-wise on here. So yeah, so we've got a few requests now to kind of take us up to the end of the hour. Oh my goodness, it's already 10 minutes to 9 uh, where I am. Let's have a little check through Instagram. Hello everyone who's tuned in, thank you so much. Um, so we've got three tracks I think to fit in, if we can. If we can't get to all of them, then we will come back to them next week. So I think we've got putting on the Ritz. Um, what was the next one? In the Mood. Putting on the Ritz, In the Mood, and By No Bist of Shame, um, which I love that song as well. Um, and uh, my producer is saying, oh, maybe you should do uh, Rockin' Bongos for us um, at some point. And I will. I can do it next week for you if you like. <laughs> I can show you the Rockin' Bongos tune. So tune in next week to hear what I mean about this call and response stuff and rock and bongos. So for now, I think let's start with putting on the Ritz. <clears throat> oh, fun fact, when we were talking about um, John Bubbles earlier, John Bubbles was Fred Astaire's tap teacher. So there you go, it all links back. 
And it does. And this is the Fred Astaire version of Feeling on the Roads. <laughs>
All right. <laughs> Woo. Thanks very much, guys. All right, we've got another few minutes left. So we're gonna sneak in by Mir at the end here. This is a track that all of our um, sandal singers love to sing. And they do a wonderful job at it. <laughs> Thank you everyone who's looking after me and keeping me well hydrated. Money me to drink, thanks very much. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, thank you everyone very much for tuning in. Um, it's been lovely to have you again. Um, we've got some great things coming up for the rest of the week. Um, tomorrow we've got our lovely Saturn doll Eve. She is a newer doll and she is wonderful and so sweet. So definitely be sure to tune in for her live stream, which is going to be 9 p.m. UK time, 1 p.m. LA time. Um, she's doing music from the movie musicals of the 40s and 50s, so that'll be absolutely stunning, I'm sure. Thursday, as always, we have baking with our lovely Olivia. Um, she always bakes some wonderful, fantastic treats, so definitely tune in for that. Friday is Roz, and she's um, doing a wonderful singing stream. And on Sunday, we've got the lovely Satin Doll um, Ella, I think. We'll find out. <laughs> anyway, I will tap you guys out with the wonderful By Mir Mr. Shane. I think I am going to do the Andrew Sisters version. Let's have a little look. By Mir. Yes, here we go. <laughs>
right. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Have a great week. See you soon.